John Birch Society report. George Washington stated, truth will ultimately prevail where pain is taken to bring it to light. Truth is the major weapon of the John Birch Society report. We will return after these words from our sponsor. The John Birch Society Report presents this weekly broadcast to bring you commentary and analysis of today's events. Our commentator today is Mr. Thomas J. Anderson, President and Editor-in-Chief of Southern Farm Publications. Well known as a columnist and humorist, Mr. Anderson has previously been heard on the John Birch Society Report. Mr. Anderson's topic today is, It Can't Happen Here. Among campus speakers at my alma mater this year, were Carl Braden, identified under oath as a communist, and Norman Thomas, bell sheep of the present Democrat Party. Known communists have spoken by invitation on more than 100 college campuses to more than 100,000 students in America during the past three years. My university, like most private schools, has always claimed it belonged to the alumni. It doesn't. It belongs to the foundation along with practically all other large universities. It was seduced years ago. The huge tax-free foundations control most of the higher education of America. These foundations have on their board some of the biggest names in the country. One World Corporate Socialist, Martinair Bleeding Heart, the Power Elite, and Amaro Big Businessmen who will do anything to stay on top. There are doubtless a few communists sprinkled among them. These leftist foundations picked the university presidents, the deans, and the teachers, and then let the alumni pick the coaches. Norman Thomas received long applause from the standing room only college crowd. Attendance was mandatory for all freshmen. I am a socialist and proud of it, he said, which is quite different approach from the communist speakers who won't admit they are communists or even socialists. What Americans mean by their constitution, Thomas said, is that all white men are created free and equal. It still has to be proved, he claimed, that in some states a white man can be convicted for any crime against a Negro. He said that with a straight face, although in his heart he knew he was lying. Questions Thomas posed to the impressionable youth were, how is it that the landlord gets so much rent? How do we allow people to get enormous inheritances? We must change ownership and control. With firing squad, Mr. Thomas? Or just peaceful confiscation? The socialist method is peaceful if possible. The bloodless socialists have always been a little embarrassed, not by the goals, but by the methods of their uncouth communist bedmates. Like Tennyson's babbling brook, Norman Thomas has babbled on lo these many years. His mind is like some of our farmland, poor by nature and exhausted by cultivation. He claimed that we must solve the problem of poverty in the United States and the world in order to maintain peace. He said the prerequisites of peace are, one, universal disarmament, two, war on poverty, Three, we must abandon the illusion, as he called it, that the only enemy of peace is communism. Now, who ever had such an illusion, Mr. Thomas? Norman Thomas and the socialists are also the enemies of peace. Millions of us will fight before we will accept their programs of confiscation, forced equality, and surrender. Head American comrade Gus Hall explains it this way, quote, the civil rights law must be energetically implemented. The war on poverty must get off the ground. The steps to ease world tensions toward world peace must be vigorously sought for. Close quote. Take your choice, Thomas or Hall. There's little difference. Communism has to be understood, the old socialist croaked. It is not diabolical. Well, it is, and so is he. I like Mr. Bosch, Norman Thomas said, referring to Juan Bosch, Castro's candidate for head killer in the Dominican Republic. I know Mr. Bosch very well and want him to go back, Mr. Thomas told the students. Then he said China is not as bloodthirsty as they are made out to be. 
We can do nothing to prevent China from being the dominant power of Asia, he claimed. Now, whose China is Mr. Thomas talking about? Mao Zedong's or Chiang Kai-shek's? And who is we? Some people are obsessed with the fact that this war in Vietnam is forced from the outside, from red China. It is not. It is civil war with us intervening on the wrong side, said Norman Thomas. We should aim in Vietnam for a compromise similar to Yugoslavia, he concluded, to a standing ovation from about one-third of the students. We should oppose this criminal conspiracy called communism everywhere in the world. Most of all, we should oppose it at home. The greater threat is from within not from without. Our greatest menace is not fall out, but sell out. The communists have infiltrated our churches, our schools, our communications, and key spots in government and business. The civil rights marches and the insurrection on the college campuses are inspired and led by communist degenerates and anarchists. Communism, whether the Russian, Chinese, or Yugoslav variety, is a criminal conspiracy to destroy God, family, and freedom. The foremost authority on communism in America, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, has warned, quote, the communist plan is to conquer the United States, if not today, then tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then the next day, next month, next year. Yeah. And with the help of our clergymen, Hollywood, press and network, and educators like Professor Milton Meyer, who said at Syracuse University, we must haul down the American flag, haul it down, stomp on it, and spit on it. Communists, pro-communists, anarchists, subversives, and all other traitors should be convicted of treason and imprisoned, deported, or hung. The dictionary defines treason as giving aid and comfort to the enemy. In determining what is treason then, one must only decide what is aid and comfort and who is the enemy. A couple of years ago, I spoke at UCLA. I guess Gus Hall wasn't available. I spoke in the student lounge there to the biggest aggregation of unwise, zoot-suited, stretch-panted, bearded, beaten it, anarchists, and slobs I've seen since I saw the marchers carrying the banners for Adlai Stevenson and John Kennedy at the 1960 Democrat Convention. Except for Selma, of course, that was the old un-American low. While I was speaking in the student lounge, there was a couple about halfway back lounging on the sofa making out. And I became so engrossed on how that was going to come out, I couldn't concentrate on what I was saying. But as I tried to talk about religion and morality, they hooted, they laughed out loud, big joke. When I tried to be amusing, they were stony-faced. When I talked about patriotism, they smirked. And at the end, the moderator said, in all seriousness, just because a person comes here and tells you things you've never heard before doesn't mean you should ridicule him. And I came away from that convinced that I would far rather my children be grammar school dropouts than to graduate from UCLA or Berkeley or anything like them. Neither Jesus Christ, Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, or Shakespeare could have been admitted to today's colleges, and all but Christ might have been ruined if there had been. A college degree is the most overrated thing since Dwight Eisenhower. We spend billions for buildings and peanuts for teachers. We are obsessed with science so we can keep up with the Russians who can put missiles on the moon but can't make toilets work. The Russians now even claim they've created a two-headed dog. Brezhnev and Kosygin. The livid left prattles about academic freedom, and that's the last thing most of the collectivists believe in. Here at American comrade Gus Hall got a standing ovation at Yale University a year or so ago. He was wined and dined by the city fathers of New Haven and of the university. He got a standing ovation in the same auditorium and on the same podium, which was denied to a fine Christian gentleman, the governor of Alabama, George Wallace. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover 
1961 summed up the situation as follows, quote, The successful exploitation and manipulation of youth and student groups throughout the world today are a major challenge which free world forces must meet and defeat. Recent world events clearly reveal that world communism has launched a massive campaign to capture and maneuver youth and student groups, close quote. In spite of the fact that Mr. Hoover made that statement five years ago, and in spite of what's happened since, most Americans go blissfully about their business saying, it can't happen here. It can't happen here, it already has, and it's almost too late. Survey conducted by several universities among high school juniors and college juniors found out this. 71% would deny an accused person the right to confront his accuser. 41% believe that freedom of the press should be canceled. 26% would allow search and seizure without consent. 53% favor government ownership of banks, steel companies, railroads. 56% voted for close government regulation of all businesses. 62% said a worker should not produce all he can. 61% rejected the profit incentive as either necessary or desirable in business. And 84% denied that patriotism is important. You remember you two spy powers? who was paid $30,000 a year by our government to do a job. And when he was caught, he said, I didn't know what I was doing, and if I had have known it, I wouldn't have done it. My superiors are responsible. Contrast that with Nathan Hale, who hadn't seen his 22nd birthday and who stood on a scaffold with a rope around his neck. And his last words were, I only regret I have but one life to lose for my country. And maybe we shouldn't blame you two spy powers too much. It was probably taught in school that patriotism is for squares. Old hat stuff. A federal dictatorship was established in this country when the Supreme Court handed down a decree stating that the federal government can step in and lay down whatever restrictions on American life it desires and the judiciary can sanctify it as the law of the land. The Supreme Court has ruled that it is legal to advocate atheism, free love, sexual perversion, and the violent overthrow of the Republic, but that it is illegal to discriminate because of race, creed, or color. It can't happen here. It already has. And it's almost too late. <laughs> We want to thank all those who've taken time to listen to the John Birch Society Report, which has again focused attention on important subjects directly involving you. Our commentator today has been Thomas J. Anderson. If you would like a copy of today's message, please send 50 cents for one copy or $1 for three copies to the John Birch Society Report, San Marino, California. Please enclose a stamped, self-addressed envelope. Ask for transcript number 25.